So now you're seeing the new DVL mounted on the Blue X3 with its new features. I hope you enjoyed it. And now I thought we could have a small chat with the, the manufacturer of the DVL from Waterlinked. So today we have uh, Oliver with us. Welcome. Thank you. So uh, could you just start telling us a little bit about the history of, of Waterlinked? Yeah, so the history of Waterlink goes back to 2013, uh, when our founder of the company was uh, coming in touch with uh, some of the existing underwater acoustic equipment which is out in the industry. And, uh, and he saw that there is a lot of old technology in use here, mm. uh, very old actually. So, so he, and he, he, had a, he has a background from, from miniaturized electronics. So he wanted to see if it was possible to do underwater acoustics using modern miniaturized low power uh, components. Yeah. Uh, it turned out to be uh, possible uh, and uh, so Waterlink then spent four years in the lab uh, developing the, the core technology of uh, underwater communication. Mm. Uh, and then we launched uh, uh, our first products actually in San Diego in the US in 2017. And then you decided to make a DVL. Can you say like how? Why was that a good idea? Yeah. <laughs> well, the the DVL development came a little bit later. We we started that in 2019, mm -hmm. uh, and at that time we had already developed a, an acoustic modem. Uh, so we had kind of the the computer, the need, the necessary computer to to do to do uh, the main thing that, that the DVL does. Yeah. Uh, and then we actually had a, a student uh, coming by us, and he wanted to do a, his master uh, thesis on a, on a directional uh, transducer. And uh, the result of that uh, thesis was uh, so good uh, that we saw that hmm, we 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 are very close to having the needed hardware for a DVL. So, so we decided to, to, uh, to try it out, uh, see if we can make a DVL. So we took the, the modem uh, technology, mm. uh, expanded it from one channel to four, uh, and it turned out that we, we basically had what we needed. So uh, then the whole project turned into be a firmware software development. Okay. And uh, we launched in 2020. Yeah. So, so what's so special about your DVL? Because DVL is not a new thing, like uh, it's been around for Decades. <laughs> absolutely. No, absolutely. And uh, you know, uh, I have a, I have a DVL uh, right here, and uh, the the most special thing about it is is what you see. It, it is the physical size. Yeah. Uh, you know, there has been a revolution, we, which Blue Eye has been an important part of uh, of uh, making happen, is to make the the ROVs small. Mm. Uh, and you you cannot simply pair uh, an existing legacy DVL with the small new uh, modern drones and, and ROVs. So, no. so we, we, we decided to make this uh, DVL uh, as so small that it can easily be fit onto the, to the new small RVs and, and, and underwater drones. Hmm. So the physical size is, the, is kind of the main thing here, yeah. but also you know, there are some, some critical other aspects. Uh, it has a very low price point, yeah. so it isn't a huge investment for a customer to add DVL functionality. And then obviously also for, for many of the use cases, it has a minimum blanking distance of only five centimeters. So you, mm. can, you, can, you can operate it all the way down to the seabed where you typically need uh, the function of uh, station keeping, for example, which the DVL will give you. Yeah, because you're usually really close to the bottom when you try to pick up something or exactly. you want to uh, monitor the... Inspect something or yeah, yeah. something on the, on the sea bottom. Yeah, so and, and, and the, the, typical, the typical other DVLs out there, they, they stop working at, uh, at uh, 50 centimeters. And that's, mm. that's a lot actually when, <laughs> when, you are, when you are working cl close yeah, to the yeah, seabed. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, how was this? Uh, wasn't it a great challenge to make it this small? Like, is it what's like the main factors? Uh, it was. <laughs> it was a very. It was a very big, uh, big challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, but of course, some of that uh, miniaturizing project came kind of by itself because we have all always uh, aimed to make small uh, products. So the, the modem that we have uh, is already miniaturized. The, the hardware, the electronics in there is already miniaturized. Mm. So we kind of took it from there. Uh, we developed on top of that. But of course, the whole mechanical solution here, uh, we have spent a lot of time uh, to, to kind of remove basically every millimeter. This mm. is a cell phone design internally. Uh, there, there, isn't, there isn't any uh, 
space available uh, anymore. Yeah. Uh, so we have had uh, long debates on why we need that last millimeter. And if we have had a chance to remove it, mm. we, we, we took it out. So, so that ended up with a, with a DVL, which is by far the world's smallest. And, uh, and it makes it uh, pretty easy to implement and uh, to mount on any, any drone or ROV out there. Mm. Yeah. So uh, as we saw in the product video, it's uh, obvious, uh, one of the obvious use cases is to get uh, station keeping yeah. uh, for an ROV. Uh, but do you have any other use cases like other vehicles or oh, know, divers? Or yeah, you know, uh, this, this DVL also has a unique feature that it carries its, its own IMU. So, so it, it does dead reckoning positioning. Yeah. directly out of the DVL. There is a lot of DVLs that doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, simply by, by uh, mounting this DVL, you also have uh, underwater navigation mm -hmm. right out of the DVL. So the, so the DVL is used for, for divers. Uh, you know, these dive boards where you have a, you have a screen and you have, uh, you have a DVL on the bottom. Okay. Uh, typically military divers, yeah. they, they use the DVL to, to track uh, how far have they been swimming? Yeah. Where where are you? How to find back to the to the vessel where you draw dropped into the water, etc. Nice. Uh, it's been used by by uh, police authorities to to document where they have searched. Mm. Uh, if if uh, searching off a river for for something, uh, it could be a dead body, etc. Then yeah, then yeah. then then you need to know where you have been. Yes. And of course, one big market is also AUVs, autonomous vehicles. Yeah. Because autonomous vehicles, they also really need to know where they are, because there is no pilot. Mm. Uh, so the, a DVL has always been a critical component, component of an AUV. Yeah. And uh, the AUV industry has gone through the same, same uh, kind of migration that, that you have been pushing with a, with a blue eye drone, mm. is to go down in size. Mm. So uh, that has fit very well with our small, small DVL, which is now mounted on, on a bunch of AUVs out there. When you've been developing this sensor, hasn't it been uh, a challenge to, to uh, how do you benchmark the, the quality of the position estimate? Because you don't really know where you are in the water and so how can you tell what's, what's the truth? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's a big challenge actually to, to kind of document and to performance test your own underwater sensors because I mean, there isn't a there isn't a established uh, truth, you know, on, on underwater where, where you are. Mm. So, uh, so we we are using several approaches. Actually, we have uh, first of all in, internally uh, in our lab, we have uh, big water tanks, mm. and we have uh, robots uh, in the water tank which can move the DVL in a in a kind of a predefined pattern, uh, which we know super accurately on where the robot has actually moved the DVL, mm. and then we can match uh, the results from the robot and the DVL itself to yeah. see if what kind of deviance uh, is there. Yeah. Uh, but of course, this is in a very controlled environment, uh, so it's kind of not kind of very valid mm. uh, for, for a real use case. So when we test out in the ocean, we use a USV, an, a surface vehicle. Okay. And on that surface vehicle, we have mounted uh, RTK-enabled GPS systems, yeah. which are accurate down to a, a centimeter approximately. And then we have the, the DVL mounted on on, uh, underneath the mm. USV, and we drive the USV in, in huge patterns. Mm. It can go for kilometers, you know. And then we match, we match the track log from the DVL with, with the track log from the GPS. Mm. And then you can really test uh, long-term accuracy, long-term uh, stability, mm. and uh, yeah, it, it gives you, a, in our view, a very, very good uh, answer to how accurate uh, the DVL actually is. Yeah, no, well, that's very clever. So um, earlier today, you got the chance to, to test out our integration of yep. the water-linked DVL on the Blue Eye X3. Mm -hmm. how, how was it to, to use and uh, get started? Yeah, I mean, station keeping? Uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, station keeping is uh, is an amazing amazing feature, uh, mm -hmm. and and I think uh, you know, uh, your office is uh, is close to a river where there is real current in, in that river. So having station keeping on, on, uh, on, on, on a drone out in that river really shows you the, the importance of it. Mm. Of it, Because you can go out in the river and you can, you can push the button on the, on the control and, and, and the ROV is there. Mm. It, it stays exactly where it's supposed to be. So it's, uh, no, it's an amazing feature. You also have the 
the DVL in front of you here, and we see uh, it has the mount, yep. the blue eye mount. Yep. Could you tell us how it's like connected to the drone? Yeah. No, I mean, uh, you know, your your uh, specific drone is uh, is is flat bottom, and uh, mm -hmm. there is no room on the bottom of the blue eye drone to kind of put a DVL inside. Yeah. So so uh, what you have done is that you have made this very clever clever mount. Where you can you can slide it in uh, off on and off the the, the drone, mm. uh, and you have this these legs which can also support the drone when it stands, and it, it's also a, a protective uh, feature for for the I mean the front end of, of the DVL itself. Mm. So it's it's a very clever way to do it uh, to to both be able to easily mount it and also to to protect the DVL itself. Because I mean, when you have this five centimeter blanking distance, you you are kind of invited to go close to the seabed. Yeah. Uh, so having that protection is uh, is a very good idea. Mm. And what about the the connector in the other end? Yeah, I mean, this is something I haven't uh, I haven't seen any other manufacturer do it uh, do this. Mm. Uh, I think it's super clever. Uh, it's uh, I know you call it a, a, a smart connector. Yeah. That's uh, right. So inside here uh, you have uh, you have a, a small computer basically telling uh, the drone what are you now connecting. Mm. So this connector, when you connect it, will tell the drone that you you now have a DVL, uh, and it will wake up the DVL features yes. of your software and in in the drone and uh, and everything, and of course also provide power and power and Ethernet. You know, and uh, because one thing is to to be able to get the features from the DVL when you're out driving, mm. uh, but uh, we know and you know that a lot of uh, our joint customers they want to go back to their offices and analyze what they have done. Mm. They want to be able to to log their their uh, their work. They want to be able to to compare their tracks with other tracks uh, from other days, maybe mm. other teams. So, so to be able to easily export mm. and to, to work with that export uh, uh, after your, your work is done for the day is a very, very nice feature. And I think your customers will, will appreciate it. Mm. All right. Thank you for, uh, for coming in today, Oliver. Thank you again for having me. I really hope you enjoyed the, this session. I did. Thank you.